All right. Now we're center punching holes. These are going to be for the cross pins for the scales that we're going to attach in the next video. We start with just an automatic center punch where I've lined up where I want the holes to be. This will give us a place for our drill bit to locate on. The drill bit I'm starting with is a 564, so I'm using a drill press for this to get the straightest hole, you get a little bit more even force on here. And the small bit punches through very nicely. The idea is to start with a small bit and then step up incrementally to larger holes because obviously drilling, I want to go to a quarter inch and drilling that all in one pass is asking a lot of any drill bit, drill press, or any, any tool really. Unfortunately, all my bits are fairly dull. I had a hard time getting it much past an eighth of an inch, so I switched to a step-style drill bit, which I, here I've marked uh, at the quarter-inch width. The black line I marked with the Sharpie, I was able to mark through the first hole, bring it to a quarter-inch easily. The second hole fought me a little bit. You can see the heat generated from that oil. So I've switched here. This is an even coarser step bit, and it should only take about two, two steps to get to our desired hole diameter. But we finally do reach the diameter. The nice thing about the step bits, the way they're cut, the way they're designed, they leave a very, very clean hole in comparison, a very round hole compared to a spiral bit. So that was nice, and if you like, you can even push it back to kind of chamfer the edges of the hole by pushing it on that next step, a step bigger. So all we have, we have very little uh, burrs to clean off after that process. And then the next step to do in preparation for grinding the bevel is to find the center line where the edge is going to be. Uh, one way to do this is to mark the edge of the knife with a sharpie and then etch into that sharpie using a drill bit that's the exact same width as the stock that we're using. The stock that we're using is 76 thousandths of an inch and that drill bit happens to be about 77 thousandths of an inch. So we're pretty darn close. We'll just drag it along the side. The center of the drill bit should be right about the center of the knife. And that'll help us ensure that the center of our blade, once we grind it to shape, will be, well, in the center of the stock. Following that, and marking up the sides of the knife, we're going to use a micrometer uh, set for half an inch, five hundred thousandths, and this will basically the top of the bevel. Not very easy to see in the video, but it's very visible to see uh, when you're grinding it. The other thing I've done is add a little bit of tape to the very end of the knife where I want the blade to not you know, be a blade anymore. And that's a bit of a dummy prevention for me. At this point, taking every single pass, I'm not removing very much material, but more instead focusing on making sure that everything is as even and level and straight as I can make it. I didn't use a jig. So after a while, uh, and, and, and a good while at that, I believe this is at least a half hour, a half or more, of just very slow grinding on the belt sander. But I was pretty pleased with the bevel I was able to get out of it. It came out very nicely flat and straight at the angle I was wanting. Holding it at that angle is relatively difficult. As you can see, it's almost completely vertical. So once I'm done with the belt sander, I mount it in this little vise that I got from my father-in-law. It's a small uh, tow, tow vise style vise, lined with a little piece of leather, grips onto the knife perfectly for little edge work like this. I just use a little piece of wood that's very flat, that's wrapped with 150 grit sandpaper. And I follow the bevel of the knife, just polishing it, and this will take out any, any minor imperfections, any waves or bumps or shallows uh, created in the grinding process from me freehanding it. So this is a, just a, one more way of just trying to make sure that everything's as even and as aesthetically pleasing as possible. After that, I decided to add a little bit of texture here to the back of the handle area right behind the bottle opener. I scribed lines 50 thousandths apart and then started cutting in with this uh, triangular diamond file to make kind of a grip, a thumb rest. It worked pretty well once the 
the depths were all even. It came out looking very nice. Relatively coarse. And that takes us to the hardening process. I'm using here a uh, oxygen and map torch, which is a great tool for brazing, soldering, and I think even like cutting of metal. Uh, the heat treating it for a knife of this size, it's not ideal, but it's the only tool I have that'll bring metal to the, the temperature required, so I use what I have. Uh, it does work, it just re requires a lot of movement of the blade to make it evenly red. And what we're trying to do here is get the, uh, the edge side of the blade as, as red as we can. You basically want it glowing red, non-magnetic, uh, so that we can immediately quench it in the motor oil, which will cause all the uh, iron, steel, and carbon atoms to align and harden. The, the back of the knife and the handle of the knife, I'm not as worried about hardening. They don't require it. Once it's out of the quench, the oil, I just lightly polish off all that burnt carbon, that burnt oil, so that we can see the actual uh, the shininess of the metal again, the, the in the white metal, so that during this stage, the tempering, we're going to put it in a 450 degree oven. This is my kitchen oven. I've cleaned the knife very well. And we'll cook it up to this straw yellow color. It took about 40 minutes. And that makes sure it's not too brittle. After that, and after it's cooled down, I uh, just started polishing it back off again. Basically lightly polishing away all the uh, discoloration from the tempering process. This is also starting to slowly work down to the actual sharp edge of the blade. Uh, up next, we'll make micarta and make the scales out of it. Stay tuned.